Uh, we're going to start our first uh, video on difference equations, which is completely new to the Applied Maths course. Now, it links with the junior cert where students will have met sequences and series, and they will have met first differences and second differences, which are also on the Applied Maths course. Students will also have, if they want to do this chapter, they will have had to do the leading cert mathematics uh, course on sequences and series and know the formulae for arithmetic and geometric sequences. And the kind of equation that we're going to deal with is typical, we're going to look, deal with three types, and the first is a linear difference equation. Now, what is a difference equation? A difference equation is where the terms of sequences are defined in terms of the previous terms. In other words, if you want to know the 500th term, you will only be able to do so if you can work out first the first term, then use your difference equation to work out the next term, the second term. When you know the second term, you can then work out the third term. When you know the third term, you can work out the fourth term, and so on and so on up to the 500th term. But that's very cumbersome, because if you want to know the 500th term, you have to work out the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and it takes ages. So what we would like to do is to define the 500th term in terms of n, the number of the term. Then we'd be able to write down the 500th term instantly. Doing such a thing, changing it from where terms are defined in, in terms of previous terms to where terms are defined in terms of n is called solving a difference equation. And here's a typical example. And this is an example from the book. An adolescent salmon, which is ready to migrate from the river, is called a smoke. The, rivers, uh, the fisheries board releases 1,200 smolts into a particular Irish river every year to replenish fixed stocks. The chances of any salmon surviving for a year when it returns to the same river is 0.2. There are at present 500 salmon in the river. Show that the population in year n is determined by the difference equation. Uh, Pn plus 1 is 0.2 Pn plus 1,200. Solve this difference equation and find the limit as n goes to infinity and see what that means. So let's try and solve, let's try and do these three parts. Now, if there were x fish in the river one year, 0.2 of those will survive. So the next year we'll have 0.2x and we'll throw in our 1,200 smolts, which we've raised in a fishery. So that'll be the number of fish next year. So in general, if Pn is the number of fish in the river in year n, 0.2 of those will survive, and then we add 1,200, and that will be the number of fish in the river the following year. And that is a classic difference equation, where a term is defined in terms of the previous term. This is a linear difference equation because it is de the term is defined in terms of only one previous year. If it goes back two previous years, it's called a second degree. Uh, equation, and we look at those later. Now, to solve linear ones, now we've established our difference equation, and our second part is to solve this difference equation. For linear difference equations, the best method is simply to observe the first three terms and identify a pattern. So if I let n be 0, I get p 0 plus 1, that's p1, is equal to 0 0.2 p0 plus 1200. This means p0 represents year zero, the start of the, of the um, operation when there are 500 fish in the sea. And p1 will be how many fish in the river the next year. So p0 is year zero. That's fine. Now we let n be 1 and we get, looking at our difference equation above, P2 is equal to 0 0.2 times P1 plus 1200. And that is equal to 0 0.2. For P1, I am going to write down the expression I have above for P1, which is 0 0.2 times P0 plus 1200. But then there's the extra 1200 uh, from this line here. So I have that P2 is... 0 0.2 by 0 0.2. Now, it's very important to write that as 0 0.2 squared. And 0 0.2 by 1,200. And 1,200. 
I'm going to let n be 2 in the difference equation above, and I get that p3 is equal to 0 0.2 times p2 plus 1200. I'm going to put this expression in here for p2. That is 0 0.2 by this entire expression, 0 0.2 squared p0 plus 0 0.2 by 1200 plus 1200, close the bracket. Now this 1200 is also added on here. So look what I have. P3 is 0 0.2 by 0 0.2 by 0 0.2, 0 0.2 cubed, P0, plus 0 0.2 squared, 1200, plus 0 0.2 by 1200, plus 1200. Or we could say 0 0.2 cubed by P0, plus 1200 by 0 0.2 squared plus 0 0.2 plus 1. Now, there is a pattern, and we can extrapolate from that that Pn will be 0 0.2 to the power of n, P0, just like P3, and 1200 by 0 0.2 to the power of n minus 1 plus 0 0.2 to all the way down to 1, this series with n minus 1 terms. You'll notice when this was 3, this was 2. So when this is n, this power is n minus 1. So what is this pattern? It's simply 0 0.2 to the power of n p naughts plus 1200. Now, there are, there are three terms in p3, and there are n terms in this, this is the sum of n terms of a geometric progression. And I'm going to look at them backwards, where it goes 1, then 0 0.2, then 0 0.2 squared, then 0 0.2 cubed, up to 0 0.2 to the power of n minus 1. So it's where a is 1 and r is 0 0.2. That is a simple geometric progression looking at it backwards. And we have a formula from that from our mathematics course and the formula is a bracket 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. We prefer to use 1 minus r to the n when r is less than 1. So we get 0 0.2 to the power of n p naught plus 1200. Now a in this series is 1, taking them backwards. One, r is 0.2. And that is the, we have now solved our difference equation. We can tidy this up by using a calculator and saying that we have 1200 by 1, which is 1200, divided by 1 minus 0.0 is 0 0.8. So we have 1200 divided by 0 0.8, which everybody knows is 1500. So I'm just going to change that, tidy it up to 0 0.2 to the power of n p0 plus 1500 by 1 minus 0 0.2 to the power of n. That is it. Can type that even further, 0 0.2 to the power of n p naught. 1500 by 1 is 1500 uh, uh, minus 1500 by um, 0.2 to the power of n. Now, let us now examine our situation. Uh, P naught is the uh, number of fish in the river at year zero before we started this, and that is 500. So if I put that in, I will get that Pn is 0 0.2 to the power of n by 500 plus 1500 minus 1500.2 to the power of n. These are like terms, and we get 1,500. We have uh, 500.2 to the power of n. Take away 1,500. That's minus 1,000.2 to the power of n. And that is the solution, the very tidied up solution to our difference equation. And uh, as it, the, that is the answer. And that tells you, you can now tell in a second, using a calculator, how many uh, fish there will be, for example, after 20 years. The answer would be 1,500 minus 1,000 by 0.2 to the power of 20, if n is 20.
But in the third question, it asks, what is going to happen to the population as time goes by? That will be the limit as n goes to infinity of pn. Well, as n goes to infinity, 1500 remains the same, 1000 remains the same, but 0.2 by 0.2 by 0.2 by 0.2 by 0.2, by 0.2 gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and dwindles towards zero. A very interesting result that the limit, the population will tend to a limit of 1500. Over the years, the population of fish, if we do this replenishing every year of 1200, the population will tend to 1500. And if we look at a nice graph here, we can see that the graph, as years go by, it gets nearer and nearer to 1500 fish in our river. So that's how to deal with the linear uh, difference equation. It is just uh, manage the, uh, just look for a pattern. And now I'm going to come to difference equations which are second degree. Second degree will be where the terms are defined in terms of two previous terms. In other words, the tenth term will be defined in terms of the ninth and the eighth term, both. Now, if the difference equation looks something like this, that term n is 7 times term n minus 1 uh, plus 8 times term n minus 2, then there is a characteristic quadratic equation with the same coefficient. x squared equals 7x plus 8 or x squared minus 7x minus 8 is 0. That is called the characteristic um, quadratic equation for this difference equation. And the roots of the characteristic quadratic equation are very significant. In what respect? Here is the theory. If alpha and beta are the two roots of that quad, uh, characteristic quadratic equation, then the solution to this second order difference equation will be of the form un, the nth term, will be a constant L times the first root to the power of n and another constant m times the second root to the power of n. This, this can be proven, but the proof is not mentioned in the syllabus, uh, so we presume it's not on. Um, there is a, just one variation that if the two roots are equal, alpha and alpha, if the two roots of the characteristic quadratic equation are both alpha and alpha, two equal roots, then the nth term of your difference equation will be a constant L times the root to the power of n and another constant m times n times alpha to the power of n. And I picked out a nice example to illustrate when would you use uh, such a, a question, such a, a formula. Here we have a large shop. It sells ice cream and coffee at the seaside in Bray. The manager of the shop has to submit financial reports to the board every six months, at the end of the summer and at the end of the winter. Now, obviously, if it sells ice cream, this is not going to be uh, the amount sold in the summer is not going to be the same as the amount sold in the winter. So, um, in his first six-month period, the profits were 100,000. In the following six-month period, the profits were 76,000. And the, the manager reckons that the nth sixth monthly profits are approximately in accordance with this difference equation. Now, we're taking n to be every six months. So, p naught will be the first six months, P1 will be the second six months, P2 will be the third six months. So that's a difference equation where the nth term is given in terms of the two previous terms. So we're, the first task is to solve this difference equation, and then we're going to interpret it as to what it means for our sales prospects. So I'm going to put that aside, that question, but this was the difference equation given, Pn, is equal to a fifth pn minus 1 uh, plus 6 times pn minus 2. Now, the characteristic quadratic equation is x squared is a fifth of 
x plus 6. We get the uh, quadratic equation with the same coefficients, uh, 1, 1, and 6, or 1, a fifth, and 6 fifths. I am going to multiply this quadratic equation by 5 to get rid of the fractions, and we get x plus 6. And so we have the quadratic equation x squared minus x minus 6 is 0. Now that factorizes nicely to 5x minus 6 by x plus 1. And so the roots are 1.2 or 6 fifths and minus 1. Now, difference equation theorem 1 says that if you have solved the characteristic difference equations, then Pn will be some number times the first root to the power of n and some constant m times the second root to the power of n. So that is, we're nearly there. We just have to know what are these two constants. And then we will know what the nth term is in terms of n, which means our, our difference equation will be solved. So let's see, how will we work out what L and M is? Well, we know that P0, we're given that P0, the profits in year 0, are 100,000. So let's put that in. If N is 0, we get L by 1.2 to the power of 0. Well, 1.2 to the power of 0 is 1. And if we let N be 0, we have minus 1 to the power of 0, which is also uh, 1. So we get L plus M by 1 is 100,000. So L plus M is 100,000. We're also given that P1 was 76,000. That's the profits in the next six months. Let N be 1. 1 1.2 to the power of 1 is 1.2. And when you multiply that by L, you get 1.2L. Minus 1 to the power of 1 is minus 1. By M is minus 1. So I'm going to write that as minus m is 76,000. So we have 1.2l minus m is 76,000. And the other one was l plus m is 100,000. When we add these two equations, we get 2.2l, they add up to nothing, is 176,000. And when we divide that by 1.2 on our calculator, we get that l is 80,000. And since L and M are 100,000, M must be 20,000. So we have solved our difference equation. Pn is 8,000 by 1.2 to the power of N and 20,000 by minus 1 to the power of N. If we simply put in for N, put in 2, we get 80,000 by 1.2 to the power of 2 and 20,000 by minus 1 to the power of 2. That works out to be 135,200. Then the profit for the next six months, P3, when you work put in N to be 3, you get 118,240. Uh, so the profits go 100,000, 76,000, 135,200, uh, 118,240. So you, it goes up and down and up and down. And the next question asks, do you think P0 and P2 and P4 represent the summer or the winter? Well, they're high, then low, then high, then low. Hi. So we presume the even ones are the summer months where we're selling lots of ice cream. And that's an excellent question solved by a difference equation. So I'm going to just take a non-homogeneous equation from the book. It says solve the inhomogeneous equation, or the other word for that is non-homogeneous equation un plus 2 minus 6 times un plus 1 plus 9 times un. That's the usual. But on the right-hand side, we have a function in n. It's 8n plus 12. And we're given that u0 is 6 and u1 is 16. Now, the assumptions that we make are that if the right-hand side is 8n plus 12, that's k times a number plus c, we may assume that un will be a times n plus b. We're allowed to make that assumption, and these assumptions must be known by the student. So we're going to assume that our answer for un will be a n plus b. Now, if that is the case, let us solve 
u n plus two minus six times u n plus one plus nine times u n equals eight n plus twelve. How do you solve that? Now, the answer is let u n. I am going to put in u n plus two. Well, if u n plus two would be a times n plus two plus b, and u n plus one would be a times n plus one plus b, and nine times u n would be nine times a n plus b, and that's all got to be equal to eight n plus twelve. So we multiply these out, a n plus 2 a plus b minus 6 a n minus 6 a plus b plus 9 a n plus 9 b equals 8 n plus 12. And this tells us that this is what we call an identity, which are dealt with in the maths course. The number of n's on the left, which are a minus 6a plus 9a, they must equal 8. And the number of numbers, they're the ones with the uh, straight lines underneath them. They tally. And the number of numbers, namely 2a plus b minus 6a plus b plus 9b, that should have been 6b, sorry, 6b plus 9b. That's got to be equal to 12. When you work these out, you get that a must be equal to 2 and b must be equal to 5. So our nth term is 2a plus 5. That is, that will work in this difference equation. And you might think, well, isn't that great? I've solved a non-homogeneous equation. And my answer is 2n plus 5. Sorry, 2n plus 5, of course. 2n plus 5. Putting for a, 2, and b, 5. If I think I'd look like that to be the solution, but it isn't the full solution. That is called the particular solution. And we have to add to that the complementary solution. And the complementary solution is the solution to the homogeneous equation where 8n plus 12 is removed, where we just put in the u's and the u's and the u's and solve. How do we solve them? We write down the characteristic equation, quadratic equation. We solve it. Its roots are 3 and 3. Ah, its roots are both the same. Well, in that case, un is uh, some number of times the first root to the power of n and some number of times n times the same root because the 2 uh, to the power of n. That is what happens when you have a double root. It's l times 3 to the power of n and mn times 3 to the power of n. That is also a solution known as the complementary solution. And the general solution is that un is the sum of these two. So un will be l times 3 to the power of n plus mn times 3 to the power of n plus 2n plus 5. That will give us the solution. How do we work out what L and M are? The answer is we are given that U0 was 16. So I put in 0 for N. 3 to the power of 0 is 1, so I get L. M by 0 by 3 to the power of 0 is 0. 2 zeros is 0 plus 5 is equal to 6, sorry, it is 6. U naught was given as 6. So therefore, L has to be 1. We were also given that U1 is 16. 
So let's put u n equal to 1. u1 is L by 3 to the power of 1, which is 3, plus m by 1 by 3 to the power of 1, which is 3m, plus 2n's, which is 2 times 1, which is 2, plus 5, that's equal to 16. So 3l plus 3m is equal to 16 take away 7, 9. Now 3l's is 3. So 3m, so m turns out to be 2. So we have solved our difference, our, our non-homogeneous equation. The ultimate solution is that un is l, 1, 3 to the power of n, and mn, that's 2n by 3 to the power of n, and 2n, and 5. That is the solution to a, a non-homogeneous equation, the sum of the particular solution and the complementary solution. It's very interesting to put that equation, that solution, back into the equation, and you will see that these bits give you zero, and these bits give you 8n plus 12, giving a grand total of 8n plus 12 as desired. And that's why it's the sum of the complementary solution and the particular solution that is the ultimate solution to our difference equation. And those are the three types on our course, and we've covered them amply. There are loads of examples, many of which emanate from uh, real life uh, things like the population of um, elephants in Botswana, the spread of COVID, uh, probabilities, um, and all kinds of uh, uh, compound interest. There are all kinds of different questions that give rise to difference equations. A wonderful new addition to the Applied Maths course. Thank you.